do the right thing, it's really think the right thing. Because, you know, this book will actually help you. If you really go through this whole book, I have so many interactions with students, and they're really concerned about do the right thing, you know. Do the right thing in my relationship, do the right thing with my children, do the right thing with my career, do the right thing with this person I met on the street, or someone in my course group. Uh, it's, it starts off with the, with the students presenting their problems in the behavioral sense, because that's where they are perceiving the problems. They don't really know that they have a perceptual problem, that they're seeing a world that's not even there, that they're hallucinating, you know, that they have a, they've already had a psychotic break. They think they're normal, they have a normal family, normal kids, normal job, normal career. Now, psychotic and schizophrenic. Um, they're, they're listening to, to two voices, they've had a complete break, break from reality, and that's the human condition, it's not just the students that happen. I just didn't get the psychotic and schizophrenic one. The, the whole human race is psychotic and schizophrenic. I, this isn't going to make it on Dr. Phil, but uh, I will never have the popularity of Dr. Phil, but I never did want that either. So what this book does is it gently takes the presenting problems and it brings it back to right mind, wrong mind. Again, just a metaphor, the present moment, the more you go deep into the present moment, or what I would call right-mindedness, you you do see that that's all that there is. It's it's everything is only present, and there is no past or future. But this is a practical unwinding from the presenting problems back to the decision in the mind. And so, when you're talking about follow a prompt, the question isn't so much about the action. Do I do this or that? It's what is the purpose of my actions? What is it for? Now that is an important distinction to let the Holy Spirit work with you on what is it for. Because the Holy Spirit is always working with you on what is it for. Regardless if you get prompts to give money or help somebody out or marry somebody, divorce somebody, date somebody, break up with somebody, you know, buy this, sell this, give this away. Those are all form things. It's the purpose underneath that's important, and that's the value of Unwind Your Mind Back to God. It's a practical manual. It's actually a testimony and a witness of watching how it's done. So I'm doing it with these students over the course of so many years, starting back in the 1990s, and you can benefit from watching it done with them. Because I guarantee you, this will relate to what you're going through too. You'll start to see that you might even see striking parallels <laughs> between the examples and the metaphors that are in the book and that was the process. And so really it's the Spirit gently being with you and 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 this is like your your owner's manual to what's really going on. The Spirit is not so concerned about this form or that form because the Spirit knows that all the forms are the same. How could the Spirit be concerned? You know, you think, oh, I've done, I didn't pay this person back, or I, I was angry at this person, or I, even something more extreme, you know, I've had people that have, that have shot somebody, or killed somebody, or whatever, and they're racked with guilt about this memory of the form that they think is unforgivable, that they just gotta suffer with for the rest of their life. This is bringing it back to that purpose, and then it gives you a new purpose, a new way of looking at the whole world, the Holy Spirit's way of looking at the world. That's where the innocence is, but it's, it's never do the right thing. It's be inspired by the Spirit, and what you do comes from what you think. What you do comes from what you feel. If you're inspired, if you're joyful, peaceful, happy, your behaviors will automatically flow from that state of mind. And if you're angry and jealous and envious, the behaviors will flow. The words, the, the facial expressions, the behaviors, the actions will flow from that. So it's really taking you back into consciousness and saying, let's look at the, the two purposes in there, the ego's purpose and the Holy Spirit's purpose. And the more you look at that, the more you realize that you really don't want what the ego is selling. You don't want its purpose, because it's just purely death. And no matter how you dress it up, and no matter how attractive you 
ingeniously make it look, in the end, you don't get fooled by the form anymore. It's like, oh, a death wish is a death wish is a death wish. I have no need of that. I do not want that. I would choose forgiveness instead. And this is your role modeling. This is your, your characters acting it out with their questions and the answers that come through the spirit, through the mouth of David, or, you know, that are written down in here. This is just role modeling. Unwind your mind. Bring it back. Trace it back. That's one of my favorite songs, Carol King, Only Love Is Real, Everything Else Illusion. And the line that I like so much about that in that song is, Tracing a line till we can define the thing that allows us to feel, only love <laughs> is real. Classic Carol King. You know, it's all right there. The whole Course in Miracles is in that song. So you don't, you know, if you really get that, you don't even need this book. You know, save your eyes some reading. <laughs>